We're going to talk a little bit in this video about how you can connect our studio projects with Git and GitHub, which is an effective way to manage your code that you're writing and keep things in more than one place, keep it a little bit safe, uh, and keep track of changes as you go along. Uh, this is a, a step that's particularly challenging to the beginner R user, but is uh, particularly rewarding once you get this workflow down and get used to the process of keeping your project up to date in a Git repository. Uh, this is gonna do a lot of things for you in the long run. It's gonna help you to, uh, to document your code better, to be able to share it with other people, uh, and uh, to be able to go back and look at earlier versions of what you've been working on. So this is something that I like to show in my classes, and uh, and that's probably why you're watching this video. So we're going to go through this process as a demonstration. Uh, first, we're going to create the Git repository on GitHub.com. Uh, then we're going to set up an R project in our studio that we're going to connect to that Git repository. And then I'll show you how to, uh, to add content, which can be any code that you're writing in our studio, and, uh, and then commit and push those changes to the repository. Then as you're going forwards and working on new code that you're writing, you can repeat the last two steps, steps three and four, as needed to keep your project up to date on GitHub. The first thing that you're gonna need is an account on github.com. Here you're looking at my page. Uh, when you first log in, you're gonna have a little bit of a planar view and that's fine, but it should have the same general structure as what you're seeing here. Uh, from this point, you're going to need to go and create a repository. And if this is your first repository, look up here at the top, uh, click on this link. And then in this page, uh, you're going to find this green button over here that says new. We're going to open a new repository. And we're going to give it a name, write a description, and set some settings for this so that it will create the repository for us. That does a lot of the heavy lifting of setting up Git in the first place uh, and does it here on the website. So we don't have to learn Git and everything else at the same time. We can just get started. So I'm just going to call the cause the. Uh, so I'm going to call. So I need to give this repository a name. I'm just going to call it uh, demo rep uh, because I need something generic for, for this. Uh, you might be naming it after a class that you're working in or a project that you're doing uh, for, for some other purpose. Uh, make it somewhat memorable for you because the more repositories you create, the more uh, likely it is that it'll overlap. It also helps to have something that's fairly descriptive in the name so that if, you, if you're going to share this with somebody else in the future, they'll be able to, uh, to hopefully remember from the name what, uh, what it is you're talking about. All right, it's a good idea to write a description uh, in the description line here. You can go back and edit this later, so don't worry too much about this right now. All right. Uh, you can choose either public or private. If you're uh, if you're an experienced user, you might just make everything public. That's often what I'll do. Um, I'm going to choose private for now because uh, if you're using this for code that you're writing in class or uh, for a personal project, you might not be ready to share that yet, and that's fine. So I'm going to choose private. Uh, these last three options, uh, the only one that I always do is, uh, is add a readme file. Uh, that's going to add a blank file with the description and repository name added to it, just as a placeholder for now. We're going to add some content as soon as we create the R project, so we don't really need to worry too much about that right now. If you choose to make your code public, it's a good idea to put a license on it. And if you checkbox this, you can choose from a variety of licenses that are popular for, uh, for software on GitHub. Um, this is not a video about licenses, so I'll save that for another time. I'll just say, read your license if you're going to add a license. Uh, since mine is private, I am not going to add a license. Uh, you can add a Git ignore for the language that you're coding in. So mostly we're going to be coding in 
R uh, in the videos I'm going to show you. So you could choose R here. I'm going to go ahead and add that because our example is going to be in R. OK, so that's it. Uh, name the repository, write a description, public or private, uh, read me at least, and then create this repository. And there we go. Congratulations. You have just published your first code repository. Of course, it doesn't have any code in it yet. So let's see about setting that up. All right, so the only thing that we need now is the URL. So copy the URL to this repository. And then let's go over to our studio. OK, here we are in our studio. Uh, we've got a blank session. We haven't been working on anything. So it's time to start working. And we're going to create an RStudio project that we're going to connect to that Git repository that we just created online. So the way that we're going to do that, there's two ways. You could either go uh, file, new project, uh, or the way that I like to, I always pay attention to this button over here where it says project none. I'm going to click on the drop down and click new project. Uh, so no, I don't want to save because I haven't been working on anything. Okay, it gives you three choices in the create project menu. I'm going to choose version control. And then it gives you two choices. It says, OK, if you want to do version control, you can either do it with Git or with SVN. Uh, most people in uh, in software development are using Git right now, and we're using GitHub. So let's go ahead and use Git or Git. And we're going to connect that to our GitHub repository. So I paste that URL that I copied uh, into this first field. And then you might notice it automatically names the project directory uh, based on the repository name, which is good. Uh, so then it's going to create a folder on your computer by that name. And this last field gives you a choice of where it's going to save that. So depending on where you like to save things on your computer, you could put this in a variety of places. But I like to create a folder called GitHub where I put all of my Git repositories. That way, they're all in one place. It's better than having them scattered around by subject or by research project. Uh, I like it all in one place. But you're free to set that up however you choose to. OK, and that's it for what our needs or our studio needs to know. Now we're going to create this project. And it says cloning into demo rep. There's a good chance it asks you for your username and password to GitHub at that stage. And you should give it those bits of information so that it will copy your repository down. OK, and uh, here we are. Now we're back in, uh, you know, in our studio window and not much has changed. So the thing that we want to check if uh, we didn't see any errors in that window that popped up is we should look at this button again on the top right of the screen it now says demo rep and uh that's that's a good sign right so that means our project connected to that repository is now available in our studio you also might see that our files tab has changed we now have a few files in here we have our readme file which we can open. Here's our text that we wrote earlier, the name of the repository, and some information about it. We can add some content there. We can change that and save that file. Now, we're going to use this repository for some coding. So I'm going to add a folder, a new folder, and I'm going to call it R, big R, because I like coding in R, and that's what I'm going to show you. And then uh, we're going to create a script and add some content. And then I'm going to show you how to update your repository. OK, there's some code. It, of course, doesn't do very much, but we you know, might load some libraries. Uh, we're going to print a message to say that this worked. And I'm going to save this because the point here is to show you how this works. All right, so I'm going to save this to that R folder. OK, if we click into the R folder, we can see 
test.r is right there. All right, so we've made some changes, we've added some content. Now I wanna show you how we're gonna work from here on out to track our changes as we write new code and update them to the Git repository online so that we never lose anything and we're creating a portfolio of our code as we go along. So when you started this project, uh, up here in the top right pane, we added a tab called Git. This is where we're gonna find tools to help us to manage this project uh, and talk back and forth between our local version of the repository and the central GitHub version of the repository. So under here, it now lists the things that we have changed uh, since starting the project. We've created an rproj file, uh, in general, I don't back those up because we're going to create a new one in, uh, if we ever move to a different R Studio, we'll create a new one when we set it up. So we don't really need that. Uh, we do want to update the readme file. So I'm going to check that because I changed some content in there. And we do want to update the R folder. We're going to check that. And uh, it says, right, we added R test.R. All right. So if I want to tell the GitHub main repository about these changes, I have to do two steps. The first one is commit these changes to the repository copy that's on my machine right now. So I'm going to do that first. I click commit and I have to write something here. So I'm going to say first commit. All right. And commit those changes close this. And then the second step is I'm going to push that commit to the central github.com repository. So what I've done so far with the commit, I've told the Git software on my machine about the changes I made. Now I'm going to tell the main Git repository that I've made some changes. And we're going to push those up. And there it goes. Again, it might ask you for your GitHub username and password, and you should give it to that interface. Now, let's go take a look and see if we found our way to changing anything on the GitHub website version. OK, here we are. Uh, it doesn't look like anything has changed yet, so let's refresh the page. And there we go. Now we've got first commit. Uh, listed here in which commit was made. One minute ago, I made those commits. And we can look, uh, the readme has different text in it. We have a folder called R, and in it, we have that script test.r. And we can go and we clicking through the GitHub web version of our repository, and we can see all of those changes that we have made. So there's lots of cool features of Git. This is a super basic example of how to set up your first our project connected to Git and the steps that we're going to take to keep track of the code that you're adding in your RStudio project. That's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching.